Time now for the latest COVID-19 developments in this week's Medical Monday segment. Dr. Aruna Subramanian is an infectious disease physician with Stanford Healthcare, and we've dealt with not only the coronavirus lately, but also a lot of bad air. Could the air quality affect the spread and the severity of COVID-19? That's a great question. There's some theoretical and practical uh, aspects to that question. The more theoretical aspects are that when you are exposed to pollutants chronically, the receptors on your airway cells in the lungs actually get upregulated, the ACE2 receptors. That's the receptor that the coronavirus attaches to to get into the airway cells. So presumably if you have more of those receptors, you're more likely to get actual airway disease and progress to pneumonia. That's more of a theoretical issue, but it has been shown when high air pollutants are, are present, like during fires. The other more practical thing is if you were planning to meet with people outside and socially distance for your meetings, when there's actual fires going on, you're going to meet inside, you're gonna close your windows and not do as good a job in social distancing. So that's another practical aspect. The other thing is that during fires, people with asthma and other lung conditions do worse. We know that. And this is a respiratory illness. So you would expect people with coronavirus to have worse symptoms if there's pollution and, and fires going on. So it's really a multi-pronged reason why the fires can affect the severity of COVID-19. Mm, let's talk treatment. Researchers at Stanford are testing a possible new treatment for COVID-19. Tell us about that trial. Yeah, there are actually multiple trials going on using monoclonal antibodies right now. We are looking at these antibodies that were made in the lab that actually fight directly against coronavirus. It, it attacks that spike protein that's on the outside of the coronavirus. And we have a few different trials going on. One in the emergency room. So people with mild to moderate illness can come to the emergency room and get either this antibody made by Lilly. It's a, it's a pharmaceutical company versus a placebo. And that preliminarily top line results has been shown to reduce the number of hospitalizations and repeat emergency room visits. It may even reduce the viral load during this, during coronavirus illness. We we're also looking at monoclonal antibodies made by another company, the Regeneron company, and that we're looking in three settings. We're doing it in inpatient folks, people who, with severe COVID-19 who are on oxygen and who are already getting treated with antivirals and steroids. We're adding monoclonal antibodies to them. And we're doing another trial using those same antibodies in the outpatient setting trying to prevent people with mild disease from getting worse. And we're going to be starting a household contact study where people who've been exposed to others with coronavirus will get this drug versus placebo and to see if fewer people get the illness in the family. Oh. And recently, uh, speaking of family, this is like a family as well, a Giants player tested positive for COVID-19, but it mm. turned out to be a false positive how reliable are those tests? Yeah, that's a, another great question. We feel that they're quite reliable. Usually a positive test is really a positive test. We don't like to chalk up positive testing to false positives, unless there's some contamination in the lab. Of course, that rarely happens. The other time when we consider false, false positives are when people have the virus and then they have... Uh, they've gotten over the illness and they may still test positive because they're shedding non-viable virus, virus that can't infect other people. But that's not really a false positive, right? That's actual virus that's just non-infectious anymore. So we would not, um, I, I would encourage your listeners not to think that false positives are very common. It's really false negatives that we worry about when people either don't do the swab properly or when they, uh, you know, when there's too little virus 
to actually pick it up. So you worry more about false negatives than false positives. And we know of several factors that could affect the severity in some patients like age, maybe weight as well, but we're learning that high blood pressure also appears to play a role, huh? Yeah, we've known actually from the beginning of the illness since March, we've known that that's one of the risk factors that uh, you know um, are, are a risk for worse severity in coronavirus. So we uh, we do take it very seriously. Um, you know whether the actual antihypertensives, the blood pressure medicines, are playing a role in the illness seems unlikely. It seems more likely that people with high blood pressure who come into the hospital and then their blood pressure drops, they need to be taken off of blood pressure medicine so that they don't get into problems with very low blood pressures during their severe illness. But high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, they're all part of this illness. We're seeing strokes. I've seen uh, pulmonary embolisms. So people are clotting more and having more strokes and other problems. It's really a vascular issue that we're dealing with. Yeah, big concern there. Dr. Aruna mm -hmm. Subramanian, thank you so much with Stanford HealthCare. We appreciate you. Sure, happy to be on your show.